Almost clean. Hey, welcome back to another video. Good new glasses. And of course, wouldn't be a, a an Aiden video if I didn't have a new bass trombone within about a week of having another bass trombone. <laughs> Here is my first ever complete Shires. I've owned lots of little like Shires parts in the past. I've owned almost an entire uh, Troubor bass in the past. Um, right now I have some other like Shires bits. I have like a slide and a tuning slide and some valves. But I've never owned the entire thing. The entire Shires trombone all at once. I traded my 50T3 which I got a few weeks ago for this. Shires Troubor bass in a pretty good condition in one of the weirder specs I've ever seen and it's really good. Just what I kind of did not expect but also kind of expected. So let's talk about this instrument real quick. First off we start with one of the most rare lead pipes you could possibly find for a Shires bass, the B1.8. Yes, 1.8. I think and someone correct me if I'm wrong and you know more about Shires than I do. There's like a specific retailer for Shires that kept getting requests for lead pipes that were in between the normal sizes. They usually have the 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3. And they kept getting requests for ones in between the 2 and the 1.5 and the 2 and the 2.5. So I'm pretty sure they made a 1.8 and a 2.3. I think were the lead pipes and I'm pretty sure it was only for this one retailer somewhere in the United States like Shires did not offer them as an option but you could go to this shop and get Shires lead pipes in 1.8 or 2.3 sizes <laughs> if I were Shires I would have just made a normal two lead pipe and put a different stamp on the top because I can't tell a difference at all in this horn it's a weirdly good uh, match doesn't seem too tight or too big or anything like that. So really cool uh, rare lead pipe. I am going to at some point, because I've had this for like less than 24 hours, switch this out with my Shires lead pipes. I have a two and I might have another one as well. And just see if I can detect any difference whatsoever. So cool rare lead pipe. Not a super rare slide, but not one you see all the time. It's a B62 NLW nickel lightweight, which means no oversleeves and all nickel. Uh, nickel tubes, nickel crook. So the lightweight slide, kind of like a Bach style. Um, not really different than a Bach in any way, except it's made by Shires and therefore has better tolerances, better clearances. Then we got true bore valves, which I have spoken about in the past. Not my favorite option. Um, honestly, I was just like, whatever. This horn is not really for me. I'm looking for a trombone for a friend of mine. And he's looking for something that's just kind of point and shoot, plug and play. You pick it up, notes come out, and they sound pretty good. And honestly, True Boars, a pretty good way to do that. So, not for me, um, but they might be exactly the right choice for him. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. True Boar valves, talked about them a lot. A B tuning slide, which I think is the larger size. There's a B and a C. And I think the C is the larger one. Or uh, the B is the larger one. Honestly, I have no idea. And then we have the typical bell, the B27YM. I think a lot of these are B27Y LW lightweights now, uh, but this is the medium weight, which is more of a just kind of regular weight. And of course, it's been cut, not the Shires ring. This is an Olsen ring, I think. And sadly, as happens to me every once in a while, got some damage in shipping. You can see a crease in the bell here. Thankfully the rim did get a little bonk, but it did not split. And oddly there's a little gap right here, probably hard to see on the camera, where the bell has separated from the ring just a little bit. You can actually see through, not that you can see this, you can actually see through the bell right there. Despite that, it sounds fine and it plays great. This is like the bell to have from Shires, and I can completely see why. It's really got this nice, dense, kind of fat sound that just kind of like maintains character, like no matter the range, no matter the volume you're playing. And even with the screw bell, which 
honestly would not be my first choice with something like this. It feels great. Um, it feels more even, kind of just simpler than my screw bell. I don't hate my screw bell. It's not my favorite bell, uh, but this just seems to work. And I can see why those Shires people out there who have the screw bells just kind of use them for everything. Because this seems more useful to me than my screw bell. Mine's a little more weighted toward kind of one type of playing. And this seems a little less so. Now let's talk about this setup. This is a little bit of a weird setup. I think this is kind of an amalgamation of parts that someone just kind of happened to find at different times. I don't think this was like a fitted setup for somebody because I don't find a lot of people pairing the, the nickel slides. I don't see this very often anyway, but I don't see these getting paired with like true bores and then like a orchestral bell very often. So right off the bat, you kind of go, hmm, is that going to be a good setup or is it just going to be a bunch of Shires parts that technically make a trombo, but it's not very good. That's the thing. Real quick side note about the modular horns, Edwards, Shires, probably Rath, etc., is you can put any combination of parts together. That does not necessarily mean you end up with an amazing trombone that sounds great in all registers. It really helps to go and get fitted and get something that works for you rather than just kind of putting a bunch of stuff together and hoping for the best. However, this, I think, is a bunch of random stuff that got put together, and uh, it turned out for the best. This might work better with, like, a normal single bore slide or maybe, like, my dual bore slide. Of course, my dual bore slide has an Edwards tenon, so it doesn't really fit Shires anymore, so I can't really test it out. But this works just the way it is. It's really strange. I thought this was just going to kind of be weird and light and stuff, but... Having the nickel slide, which is lighter, a little faster, paired with a screw bell, kind of, they kind of cancel each other out a little bit, um, and it kind of just feels normal. These true roars also, my playing has changed a lot in the last couple of years, and it's been a couple years since I played them. Um, they feel a lot better than I remember them feeling. I think if I went and played this in real life with people, I'd probably find what I didn't like about them again, because that's what's happened every time. In the practice room, I'm like, wow, these are amazing. They're so easy. And then I try and play with people, and I'm like, oh, yeah. They don't really let the sound widen out, all that kind of stuff. And playing it back and forth with my monster bass, I didn't feel a need to just instantly switch to this, even though it is very easy to play, very even, has very quick response. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in this horn. I actually have someone who already reached out, and they said they might want to trade their axials. For these, I might do that. Again, this horn's not really for me. Um, hopefully, <laughs> I, I have a friend who's probably going to buy it. Um, and if they don't, then, oh no, I end up with a Shires. Oh no. What's really cool, of course, is that I have a Bach Gold Bell that is set up for Shires. And so I'm going to try that out. The spacing is not quite white right on that bell and it doesn't quite fit um, so I might have to take it to a shop and have some things rejiggered um, but I'm very excited to try some Shire stuff out for the first time in a very long time they're so expensive that I don't really deal on this kind of stuff but I got lucky with a trade um, I will miss that 50 t3 it was very good um, but I just don't need that. <laughs> Not that I need this either, but at least it's a little bit different than my other bases. All right, well, that's all for now. Uh, more bases and stuff coming soon, I'm sure. And uh, bye-bye.